I'd like to start with the children, if they're willing to come a little bit closer down on the rug. Anyone want to come down and look at what I have in my basket? This is what I have in my basket. <laughs> Hi there. So what's in the basket? What, what's in here? Can you say what's what you see? Come on up. Yeah, do you want to come up? What's in the basket? What is it? What do we call this? What do we call this? Is this bread? You think this is bread? But look. If this is all bread, how come it all looks so different? This is bread. It looks one way. Here's bread. That looks completely different. <laughs> and now this is a kind of bread. But isn't that interesting? That there, there are all these different kinds of bread. It's all bread. Now this is kind of the bread that I'm used to only when I grew up it was really white. Um, but all of this stuff is bread, you know, but it's all different kinds. And I think that's, there's something amazing about there. There are two amazing things, in my opinion. One is that people in different parts of the world have figured out different ways to make bread based on, I don't know what, what kind of grains they have or what kind of ovens they have or whatever it might be. So people are so inventive about what kind of bread there can be. And there are all these different kinds. So I think that's amazing that people have figured out like a gazillion different ways to make bread. And yet we all say, oh, that's bread. And I think this is kind of like us, that we're kind of like this. So, so, some of us are kind of these, this kind of person, and some of us are kind of this kind of person, and some of us are kind of this kind of person, and some of us are kind of this kind of person. And, and that's really cool that we're all different kinds of people, that we're not meant to be the same. It's clear to me, it's absolutely clear to me that we are meant to be as different as we are. So we have this kind of bread, and we have, this is actually a corn tortilla, and we have, we have croissant, or as they say in New Jersey, croissants. <laughs> and, and it's just amazing. And you know, today, one of the reasons we have all this kind of bread is, is today we're celebrating worldwide communion. So you know how each Sunday we have communion, where we have the bread and the cup, and people are doing that all around the world. So today we're going to think about not just right here communion, but we're going to think about communion happening all over the place. And maybe they're using this kind of bread. And maybe they're using this kind of bread. Maybe they're using this kind of bread. I like this because I can wave it around and I can point. I like bread you can point with, make a point. Or maybe it's, you know, one of these kinds of breads. All right. So when you eat your bread, next time you have some bread, you think, oh, thank God for bread. And thank God it comes in so many different shapes and sizes. Don't you think? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Such a great passage, you know, that we just heard. And especially Eugene Peterson's version of it in the message. It's just clear that Paul, and you know the, the bigger story of this, as we've been looking at 1 Corinthians, the bigger story about 1 Corinthians is that Paul is not around. And the people in, Corinthian, in Corinth are not behaving very well. And so he's writing them letters. You know how it is. You, 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 hear the, you hear rumors. People are doing stuff and bad stuff. And you start to write them letters, giving them a little bit of advice. And so all this last month or so, we've been hearing the advice that Paul has to give us about a variety of things. And it turns out that the advice probably isn't just good for the people of Corinth. <laughs> that it might be good for us, too. And today, the problem seemed to be with the way they were doing communion. And it sounded like from the passage, and you know, he's in Ephesus or someplace. So he, he's not getting eyewitness reports. So it may have been, you know how stories get exaggerated. So it may have been exaggerated a little bit. But the problem seemed to be that people were coming to what was supposed to be communion, but it was some sort of bigger thing. And it was a bigger thing where some people seemed to get better food than others or more food than others. And it said, you know, some, and he just lays it on the line, at least in, in Peterson's version. Some of you are acting like pigs. Some of you are acting like pigs. And some of you have to be carried away because you're drunk. You know, that's just a little bit excessive. So some, something had happened where they had lost what I think is perhaps 
one of the essential elements of communion, which is that it's simple and it's shared and it's equal and everyone can come. Okay, maybe that's five things. All of those things are so important in communion that everyone has access to the table, that everyone gets the same food, that we share, that we share. We, not, we don't hoard, we share. And that we don't have to be carried away at the end because we're drunk. <laughs> That's a mental note to myself. <laughs> Perhaps this is practice for us, to come to a table like this and to come week after week, to come to a table like this is practice for us to imagine how the bread in the world might be shared equally. Now this is a huge kind of problem, it's a huge kind of task. And I'm not gonna stand here and suggest that I have the answers to how that works. But if we know from our own experience over and over and over again that the bread should be shared equally, then that will change the way we look at the way that food is dealt with in the entire world. And not just in other parts of the world, in our own country. It's said that one out of five children are in poverty, which means they're probably not getting enough to eat. If they're not getting enough to eat, their brains aren't developing correctly, they can't learn, and all kinds of things happen. So at this basic level, nutrition is such an important thing. And then if we look at the wider world, where creative people have figured out how to take what they have and feed themselves in wonderful ways. What does it mean for us to be concerned here in this spot in Berkeley, California in October of 2013? What does it mean for us to be sitting here at this spot sharing in this meal and also considering all the other people who might be eating or need to eat in the world? Perhaps this table is practice. Perhaps this table is practice. For us at a basic body level to recognize this meal as a meal that's shared and is shared equally and is shared with everyone. Shared equally and shared with everyone. Now, when I was looking at the first part of that passage before he starts to talk about communion, and he was talking about, it seems like when you get together that rather than, thing, than this calling out the best of you, it seems to be calling out the worst. And I thought, oh, our national government. <laughs> you know, you get together, and do we get the best of what might happen when you get a group of people who supposedly are caring Carrying the care for the country, do we get the best of what might happen? It seems like it's pulling out the worst. And you can know that if there are challenges to the economy because of sequestration, because of the, um, the current inability to pass the budget or to raise the debt ceiling, that these things, these economic at, uh, impacts, are going to be felt by the poor, first of all. And you hardly, in, in this conversation, in the, in the conversation about this, I have hardly heard anything about how this affects people who are living in poverty. It will only get worse if things continue on in this way. What would it mean if we were able to gather our people in government around a table where things were shared equally and with everyone. What would that mean? This morning, I just invite you to open your eyes and your hearts and your minds to know that wonderful thing of being able to be right here and right now but also to be able to hold all places in the world, at least for a moment, to have compassion for those who don't have perhaps what we have, and to recognize that we might have a responsibility in all of that, and to see that this table 
might just be practice. It might be practice, some really good practice for the way that things work. We do this over and over. And that's why we do it, to practice. You can't have this meal once and expect. We do it again and again because we forget. You know, Paul's not around to keep us in line. We forget. But now instead we gather on a regular basis with each other and we remind each other. And one of the ways that we remember is through this meal. And so we remember on the last night of Jesus' life, he took bread and he gave thanks for it, blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken open for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. After supper, he took the cup, he poured out the juice, and he said, this is my blood, new covenant, shared with you to fill your life with passion for justice, for peace. Whenever you gather together and eat this bread and drink this cup, remember me. Remember the world that we are creating together. Can we pray over this meal? Dear God, bless this for all of us, for all of us and for all the world, that we may hold your intention in the largest and grandest way we might imagine. 